Hello, everyone, and welcome to our United in Prayer online gathering. It is wonderful to have you with us today as we continue to stand together united in prayer. Today, we are blessed to hear from our dear friend Lydia Rotseth, a past teacher, a counselor, and the ex-president of the Auxiliary of the Gideons for a couple of years, as well as the very proud grandmother of four. And today, Lydia will encourage us to always be ready to give a reason for the hope that's living in us, sharing it with gentleness, respect, and unwavering faith. Lydia, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Carmi. Um, good day, everyone. It's so lovely to see you again um, and to be able to share this message today. Some of you might know that Roald and I are uh, involved in an apologetics student ministry called Ratio Christi. Now, Ratio Christi means in the defense of Christ. And we work mainly at universities where we equip students to defend their faith. One of the verses that often gets used or quoted in Ratio Christi is 1 Peter 3 verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. And the other verse we like to refer to is 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 to 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, I think that when you hear these voices, you, like many Ratio Christi members, you will become charged up. Yes, I think that we will start preparing a defense of Christ. And that is what Ratio Christi is. You and I and, and the Ratio Christi members become excited and enthusiastic to, quote, do our thing for Christ. We would love to pull down strongholds and cast down arguments. And obviously, that's not wrong at all. That is why we have this ministry and why we as Christians, we do evangelism and we reach out to others. Today, however, I want us to take just one step back. Let's just go back to that verse in Peter again. Read carefully. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. With meekness and fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. Did you pick up on a few of those words? to sanctify the Lord in your heart. And that implies that Christ is your Lord, your Lord and Savior. In other words, you must have made an inner commitment to Christ. When our children were small, we used to say, you have to make Jesus the boss of your life. And my question to you today is, have you done that? Have you reached that point in your life where you realize that there is nothing that you can do in order for you to be with Christ in eternity? Because that's what it comes down to. What Christ did on the cross, dying for your and for my sins. Roald and I were speaking with some friends the other day, and both of us were saying that Actually, having grown up in a Christian home sometimes become, be, um, makes becoming a Christian more difficult 
because you have lived this good life. You know, no drinking, no smoking, no swearing, etc. But you know what? I drive a Hyundai. And just like me, parking my Hyundai in the Mercedes garage doesn't make my Hyundai a Mercedes. Neither does living and growing up in a Christian home make you a Christian. You yourself need to make that decision. You yourself need to give control of your life over to Christ. You need to sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Your ratio, Christy, your defend of Christ message will have such a bigger impact because you won't just have theoretical defense of Christ, but it will be real. It will come from a place of love for Christ and thankfulness for what he has done for you. It will come with joy because of what is to come, eternal life with Christ. My friends, our conversations, our messages, our talks, our discussions and debates will be so much better, so much more powerful because of our relationship with Christ and because of the Holy Spirit, his power in us. And you won't need to stress too much about how to answer, what to say, because there will be a readiness to testify and you will do it with weak, with meekness, with fear. In some translations, it says with gentleness and respect. Friends, it is so important to be a gentle woman or a gentle man, even and especially when we are opposed by unbelievers. And for me, this is especially so if we are involved in a debate. I have always admired our eldest son. We, he has entered into debates with non-Christians about transgender issues. There is respect and kindness and Christian love. Our answers, our responses should be given with love. Never in a degrading manner or in harsh terms. As verse 16 says, those who revile your conduct in Christ may be ashamed. Our loving attitude, friends, will put the unbelievers' bitterness in a bad light. Your and my attitude towards others, especially unbelievers, is extremely important. But also our attitude towards our fellow Christians. Let us never lord it over them. Let us never try and be more superior. Let us never be know-alls. In 2 Timothy 2.15, it tells us that we have to do our best to be diligent in presenting ourselves approved to God as workers who do not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. As you labor for the Lord in your life, in your ministry that you are involved in? Do you actually seek God's approval? Are you rightly dividing and handling the word of God? Do you endeavor to discover the truth in and from the word and then pass it on to others? Not the ideas that are popular in the world or what your favorite guru might say or think, when we know Christ personally, when the Holy Spirit abides in us, when we love our neighbors, other believers, as well as unbelievers, then our testimony, our apologetic, will be powerful and will be to the honor and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christianity will grow the ministries that we are involved in will grow. And above all, the kingdom of Christ will grow. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord God, that we can know you in a very real way. Help us to share with others in such a way that your name is glorified through our conversations and attitudes. 
Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. And Lord, today we also again commit Mariana to you and ask for your healing hand to be on her. We pray for wisdom for the medical staff, Lord. Comfort and strengthen her and her loved ones. Lord, we ask this in your son's precious name. Amen. Amen. Lydia, thank you for reminding us today to always share the hope that lives within us. Regardless of our circumstances, may we continually seek to know God more deeply, never judging others for their relationship or lack thereof with him. Instead, may we always approach them with Jesus' love and compassion. And let's remember that sharing our faith not only reaches those who don't know Jesus, but also strengthen our own faith and relationship with God. We will now be breaking into our smaller rooms to pray together. Our prayer prompt for today is, Lord, we stand united in prayer, declaring you as the Lord over our lives. May we share the hope that's living in us with gentleness, respect and unwavering faith so that your love and truth shine through every word we speak. For our Facebook listeners, thank you that you have joined us today. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And now for all of 